Carlos says, I have a Microsoft 365 user without license. It's very James Bondish user without license. Anyone know how do I redirect email inside or outside in which him is the recipient to other mailbox? I've created an exchange rule where if recipient address has some words, this email will be forwarded to me, but I receive a non-exist error email. Can anyone translate that? I have no idea. What I read was blah, 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 blah. No, <laughs> no license. So when he sets up an Outlook rule and he tries to do something to a unlicensed mailbox, it's like, sorry, buddy, yeah. you're cut off. Because there's no license. Again, do we need an alias or, you know, fork Maybe. out the five bucks a month for their license? <laughs> they need the yeah. license to do anything, yeah. I would think. You're just going to have to, have, regardless of the rule. So it's like if, if it sees particular words, forward it to over here. But that's got to be a licensed account. I wonder if it's like, so I, you know, you see people, they have employees that leave and then they want to use their incoming email because it's already set up with things or people yeah. are already sending things to them. And they're like, well, I don't want to pay for the user because they're not there anymore, but I want to use their inbox. And guys, like, that's just not a thing. So either, either pay for the license and deprecate the user step and update all your materials or pay for the license and do like a forever forward and just deal with it. Yep. Or could it again be an alias? Maybe depends because it sounds like he's trying to get two mailboxes to work together. Yeah, but not an, an alias would work because if it's still there's still a licensed user behind that, you can have multiple aliases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but if they're not trying not to, work. If they need to for be a synchronized email. thing. Right. Yeah, for new emails, not for the old emails. They'd have to migrate yeah. the old emails still. I, I wonder if you could hack it by uh, putting an alias on uh, an Office 365 group mailbox. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think you <laughs> can create an alias. So cringy. there's also not sure you can do that. for creating. No? Yeah, I don't think you can do that, but I also know you can't create an alias unless the mailbox is gone because, like, that name is owned. So you'd have to essentially get rid of that for like it would have to be completely deleted first to even create the alias to begin with. Because doesn't it hold it in kind of hostage state for a certain period of time once like you delete 90, it? What is it like 90 yeah. days or something before it's pushed yeah. out there? You can go run a PowerShell, you can purge it, but yeah, otherwise it's 90 days holding mm. that. How did you have did were you saying something? Did you have a good idea? Uh, no. <clears throat> He's like, nope. no. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like we got the answer for that. Yeah, pay, for the uh, pay if you want to play. Uh, well, the one other thing about that, and of course it doesn't sound like he's got any involvement in that at all, <clears throat> but if he's attempting to use out to use exchange to forward outside of its outside of its own domain, it won't do that unless you tell unless you go in with the administrative tools and set it up that way because uh, that's to prevent email loops. It will not forward outside of the domain without authorization and you actually throw in a switch. I that should say any automatic response is not permissible. And that's basically what he's doing with the rule is an automatic response. And those, those simply aren't permitted unless, unless you've specifically told Exchange that you won't do that. Thank you.